The research don't stop. So that means we can't stop researching. Okay. So we, we have to study and show ourselves approved here. All right. News, medical, and life sciences. Study reveals how formaldehyde alters gene expression through epigenetics. Epigenetics, the chemical mechanisms that control the activity of genes, allows our cells, tissues, and organs to adapt to the changing circumstances of the environment around us. This advantage can become a drawback, though, as this epigenetic regulation can be more easily altered by toxins than the more stable genetic sequence of the DNA. An article recently published at Science with the collaboration of the groups of Dr. Manel Estelar, director of the Joseph Carreras Leukemia Research Institute, IJC Cerca, ICREA research professor and chairman of genetics at the University of Barcelona, and Dr. Lucas Pontel Ramon y Cajal Fellow, also of the Joseph Carreras Institute demonstrates that the substance called formaldehyde commonly present in various household and cosmetic products in polluted air and widely used in construction is a powerful modifier of normal epigenetic patterns. The publication is led by Dr. Christopher J. Chang of the University of California, Berkeley in the United States, whose research group is pioneer in the study of the effects of various chemical products on cell metabolism. The research has found focused on investigating the effects of high concentrations of formaldehyde in the body, a substance already been associated with an increased risk of developing cancer, nasopharyngeal nasal tumors, and leukemia, hepatic degeneration due to fatty liver, steatosis, and asthma. Dr. Estellar points out that this is relevant because formaldehyde enters our body mainly during our breathing and because it dissolves well in an aqueous medium, it ends up reaching all the cells of our body. And look at this quote. The substance is especially concentrated in various products used in construction, furniture, manufacturing, the textile industry, and some hair products. You hear that, ladies? I want you to see that. Dr. Manuel Estellar, director of the Joseph Carreras Leukemia Research Institute. Going a step further, Dr. Pontel stresses this vision, pointing out that formaldehyde is not only a significant environmental hazard, often found in polluted fumes, but it can also be generated within our bodies, through the metabolism of common dietary substances like the sweetener aspartame. Moreover, our cells are continually producing formaldehyde, a known mutagen that can lead to cancer. As an overview of the research, Dr. Estellar points out that we have discovered that formaldehyde is an inhibitor of the MAT1A protein which is the main producer of S-adenosyl L-methionine, S-A-M. And this last molecule is the universal donor of the chemical group methyl that regulates epigenetic activity. Specifically, we found that exposure to the formaldehyde to formaldehyde induced a reduction in S-A-M content and caused the loss of methylation of histones, proteins that package our DNA and control the function of thousands of genes. Altogether, this work reveals an even more concerning aspect of formaldehyde's toxicity. Dr. Pontel summarizes it as, we have discovered that formaldehyde has the capacity to modify the epigenetic landscape of our cells, which may, might contribute to well-documented carcinogenic properties of formaldehyde. The epigenetic changes caused by the toxic agent directly contribute to the origin of the mentioned diseases. Beyond its known mutagenic pro properties, and that says could directly, I'm sorry about that, I skipped the word. On this regard, Dr. Estellar informs that international health authorities are already restricting the use of formaldehyde as much as possible, but there are still areas of work where high levels of it are used, such as in the manufacture of resins, the production of plastic, 
industrial foundries, or the cosmetic industry. In addition, it also originates during the combustion of automobile gasoline and in tobacco smoke. Thus, environmental and health policies aimed at reducing our exposure to the characterized substance should be promoted. As you can see, the source of information right here, and let's go figure out, for those that don't know, what is epigenetics? A simple Google search will show you a definition that says, in biology, it is a noun, the study of changes in organisms caused by modification of gene expression rather than alteration of the genetic code itself. Right, And so let's look a little bit deeper into that. So here we are at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, Genomics and Precision Health Home. Your genes, what is epigenetics? Your genes play an important role in your health, but so do your behaviors and environment, such as what you eat and how, you physically, how physically active you are. Epigenetics is the study of how your behaviors and environment can cause changes that affect the way your genes work. Unlike genetic changes, epigenetic changes are reversible and do not change your DNA sequence, but they can change how your body reads a, reads a DNA sequence. Gene expression refers to how often or when proteins are created from the instructions within your genes. While genetic changes can alter which protein is made, epigenetic changes affect gene expression to turn genes on and off. Since your environment and behavior, such as diet and exercise, can result in epigenetic changes, it is easy to see the connection between your genes and your behaviors and environment. So, how does it work? Epigenetic changes affect gene expression in different ways. Types of epigenetic changes include DNA methylation, works by adding a chemical group to DNA. Typically, this group is added to specific places on the DNA where it blocks the proteins that attach to DNA to read the gene. This chemical group can be removed through a process called demethylation. Typically, methylation turns genes off and demethylation turns genes on. Histone modification. DNA wraps around proteins called histones. When histones are tightly packed together, proteins that read the gene cannot access the DNA as easily, so the gene is turned off. When histones are loosely packed, more DNA is exposed or not wrapped around a histone and can be accessed by protein that read the gene, so the gene is turned on. Chemical groups can be added or removed from histones to make the histones more tightly or loosely packed, turning genes off or on. Non-coding RNA. Your DNA is used as instructions for making coding and non-coding RNA. Coding RNA is used to make proteins. Non-coding RNA helps control gene expression by attaching to coding RNA along with certain proteins to break down the coding RNA so that it cannot be used to make proteins. Non-coding RNA may also recruit proteins to modify histones to turn genes on or off. Okay. And so then you have more studies, and I definitely would say go and research this information so that you can understand the genetic impact, okay, the on and off, the behavior and environment that affects your, um, you know, genes or affects how they work, right? All of these things. I'm not a doctor, but I research this stuff because I want to know what is being, uh, um, you know, said in research and is it true? Also, how it affects us. And so you should definitely do the same thing, continuously study and show yourself approved. Someone that does not need to be ashamed of what is taking place or the lack of knowledge that may cause you to perish. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Go study, research, and inquire.